Hey there folks, I'm Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to my first generation regenerative farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. These are my cows. It's the dead of winter and you don't see a mud hole. Isn't that amazing? Come along today and we're gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about how we run our regenerative farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina and why we don't put our hay in a barn. It's wasting money, it's wasting time, it's wasting fuel, and it'll destroy your farm. And we don't want that, right, sweetie? We don't want that. That's right, good girl. Come along, guys, let's learn a little bit together. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. All right, folks, welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm. If this is your first time here, your 50 millionth time, please hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, we're on a 150 acre first generation farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. The videos I create are sometimes tool reviews, sometimes tractor videos, sometimes working on the farm, just all sorts of stuff. Sometimes we're even inside cooking. So there's all sorts of great rural lifestyle content here and even a little bit of hot rod content. But today's video, we really wanna focus on on farming. We're going to focus on some of the thought process behind what I do here on the Stony Ridge Farm. The thought process of saving money, the thought process of saving fuel, saving time, feeding our cows, less input costs, no medications for our cows, no uh, outside input other than cows, land, and grass and that's pretty much it so what you see behind me is called a greg judy bale unroller and that is a honda foreman 500. what you see over here is a new pioneer 1006 side by side that's a six seater side by side we use both of these pieces of equipment here on the farm to roll out hay to our cattle when you look around the farm here and we'll kind of pan the camera around just a little bit sun's about to go down so you might get a little bit of shadow but when you look around you don't see mud, you don't see a disaster, you don't see a mess. And when you drive down the road or you go look at your own farm or your grandpa's farm, you might see something a little bit different. You might see mud, dirty tractors, muddy cows, manure everywhere, a total disaster in the wintertime. Now, farming can be very challenging in the wintertime and here's one of the ways that I get away with not having a muddy, mucky, nasty, gross farm. I don't worm my cattle, okay? And you might be rolling your eyes. Oh, you didn't worm his cattle. Oh, they're probably all sick and dying. You guys, you see the cows. I'm gonna scroll a little shot of the cows as they're uh, standing here waiting for me to roll out the next hay bale. You see the cows. They don't need to be wormed when they're not grazing and or eating and consuming their food near their own feces, okay? So we have to think about that. What causes disease in animals? What causes disease in humans? What really causes disease and infection is filth. Filth causes disease. So when you think about it, we move our cattle in the summertime two times per day. They don't see their own manure for longer than 12 hours in a particular paddock here on the farm. What we're really here to talk about today is storing your hay. These are round bales. We use round bales here on the Stony Ridge farm. They're easier to handle for one person. It's just me and my significant other, my wife, or ex-wife or whatever we're gonna <laughs> make that into pretty soon, my future wife out here on the farm. This is about a thousand pound hay bale and it's on the Greg Judy bale and roller. We store all of our hay and you can see a row of hay right here outside. These round bales have what we would call a thatch roof on it. So if you think about it, for a millennia, people built homes and they used thatch, they used hay, they used straw, they used grass-like material to shelter their homes. These hay bales have a thatch roof over top of them and they don't go bad when they're sitting outside. Now, you leave this hay bale outside for five years, yeah, sure, it's gonna go bad, it's gonna rot. 
These hay bales were put here in the spring, probably sometime yeah, mid-May-ish, and they're spring cut hay. I alternate the hay that I put on the farm. In other words, in uh, certain years, I'll use a fall cut hay, and in certain years, I'll rotate and I'll use a spring cut hay. Those different types of hay have different types of grass seeds in them, and we wanna stimulate both cool season grasses and warm season grasses here on the farm. So each hay bale contains its own seed bank. So inside that hay bale is probably, I don't know, 10 to 15 pounds of good quality, cool season grass seed inside of it. We're gonna go over there and take a look at it. And what I'm trying to sell you on here is you don't need to build a $50,000 barn to house a $50 bale of hay and to save a minute amount of money. And let me explain that to you a little bit closer as we get up next to this bale. So this bale of hay is sitting up on the Greg Judy bale and roller. I'll post a link down the video description to greenpasturesfarm.net. It's my friend, Greg. Greg builds these, he sells these. They're an awesome piece of equipment and they're an instrumental part of this regenerative farm. This is a hay bale, much like the hay bales that you see in the row back here. It was sitting on the ground, and this is the portion that was sitting on the ground. We're gonna take a deeper look at that, and we're also gonna take a deeper look at the top of this hay bale, where it's been rained on. It's been rained, sleeted, snowed, all sorts of stuff for about six months now, and it's doing absolutely fantastic. We are talking about the amount of waste that goes into this hay bale is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 5%. So, doing the math, $50,000 for a barn, you got a tractor, you got to put fuel in. Let's not even factor in the cost of the tractor. Let's just factor in the fuel cost and the time cost. So we build a barn way over on the other side of the farm, closer to the house where we don't have to fight our way through the mud. Well, we've got to keep gravel down for that barn. So we've got to put our gravel input in. We're probably going to spend $2,500 to $3,000 on gravel. So we got $53,000 in a hay shed to house 200 bales of hay. And that's how much hay we consume here on the farm on an annual basis. 200 bales of hay. 3% of a $50 bale of hay is $1.50. Got me? $1.50 times 200 is how much? That's $300 per year not even considering the time savings and the fuel costs that it takes to take the bales of hay off of the trailer, put them in the barn, stack them in the barn. Then when you need the hay, you've got to take the hay down, set it out of the barn, haul it all the way across the farm. Then you got to get your bale unroller and set it out here, hook to it and unroll it. We're talking about moving massive amounts, tons and tons of material around your farm on a heavy, heavy tractor. What have we found over years and years and years of experience on a farm? When you take a heavy piece of equipment and you run it over top of soft winter soil, and make no mistake, this soil is very soft. You take heavy equipment, you run over the soil, and you destroy the soil infrastructure. There is infrastructure in the soil. There is living things in your soil that you are destroying as you run over it. You're destroying all the fungi, the mycorrhizal fungi, which fix nitrogen. They actually pull nitrogen from the air and pull it to the soil so that you don't have to put in commercial fertilizer input. That's what we do here on the farm. So again, we're doing the math at $1.50 per bale, 200 bales. We're talking about $300 worth of hay savings per year, $300, which is the equivalent of how many bales? 50 bales, $50, let me do math on camera, which is horrible. Six bales of hay, totally six bales of hay, wasted, but not wasted. This portion of the hay bale goes to feeding the land. I wanna take a closer look at it with you real quick. So for the sake of this video, this is our sacrifice bale. This is a net wrapped bale. I totally encourage you, if you do buy hay for your farm, if you're thinking about uh, buying hay for your farm or you're thinking about building a farm, or if this is just something that you find interesting, understand the only part of this hay bale that's really gonna go bad is the bottom piece right here, and it's only about that much. We're gonna get our razor knife out here, and we're gonna open this up real quick. Just part of it, I'm not gonna feed this hay bale today. We just wanna open up some of it so you guys can see what's good and what goes bad. So this is what's in contact with the ground. If you want to avoid contact with the ground, you can take logs and lay them out and set your hay on logs. 
All these hay bales that are behind us are specifically set out so that I can back through them with the bale unroller and do this very easily. I have a stack of hay here. I have a stack of hay in the other pasture. I have a stack of hay in the other pasture. Every single pasture has a stack of hay or rows of hay so that I don't have to move across my land and destroy the soil's infrastructure, okay? That's the whole goal. And next year my soil will be better and the year after my soil will be better. We don't bale hay right off the farm. Now, a lot of you guys might be rolling your head. We're gonna get in here, don't worry. A lot of you guys might be rolling your eyes, rolling your oh God, you don't bale hay off your farm, oh, you know. Well, here's the way we decided to do that is instead of maintaining and keeping up $60,000 worth of infrastructure in order to bale hay, we decided that we would buy high quality hay and bring this carbon to our land. In other words, each one of these hay bales weighs, well, let's just say for simplistic purposes, 1,000 pounds. That is 100 tons of carbonaceous biomass that we are bringing to our land every year by buying our hay versus baling our hay. So if we baled our hay, we'd have to buy hay string, we'd have to buy the fuel, we'd have to take the time, we'd have to have a rake, a tether, a cutter, and a baler, <laughs> and a tractor to pull it all, and sometimes multiple tractors, not to mention a trailer to load the hay on and haul the hay to wherever it is we're going to haul it to. Put it in a barn, there's 50,000 more dollars. Guys, it's dollars and cents, and it makes sense to build your soil versus maintaining infrastructure, okay? So, for simplistic purposes, $10,000 worth of hay this year. We will waste $300 worth of that hay, and we're right here in the crustiest, nastiest part of the bottom of this bale, okay? That's it, that's the nasty, okay? So I'm gonna get in here. Let's just take my knife and get in there right quick. I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna show you how much we're wasting, okay? We're gonna cut out a little square. It's gonna blow your mind. It's not much. It doesn't make sense to put your hay in a barn. Just cause grandpa did it, doesn't mean you need to do it for your property, okay? This is unconsumable, unusable hay. This is biomass and carbon that will feed your land. This is the next little bit of it. Smells like good hay to me. Smells pretty good. The cows will consume it. As we dig in here about, a half an inch to an inch, we start digging in and pulling out good hay. This is good hay, right? So why in the world would I put my hay in a $50,000 shed, take a $35 to $50,000 tractor, scoop that hay out, set it on the ground, carry one bale on the front and one bale on the back, take a 8,500 pound machine, move that hay all around my farm, destroying my infrastructure, making a huge mud hole, only to save $300 per year. How many years would it take to make that back if you paid $50,000 to build your barn. And let's just say for simplistic purposes, every month you're gonna spend at least six hours taking hay down and putting hay out versus every day that I come out here and roll out a bale of hay, it literally takes me 15 minutes. I move the cows, I grab a bale, I unroll the bale, the cows totally consume that bale. Whatever is left behind is grass seed, and it's carbon, carbonaceous material that's left on the soil, that's food for microbes and earthworms, which will soften your soil. It will create humus, which is the, <laughs> the basic building blocks of soil life, humus. So guys, that's what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today. We're actually gonna go on the other side of this bale and you're gonna see the part of the bale that was rained on versus the part that was right here on the ground. And we all now understand that it's not much waste. We're gonna cut open <laughs> right into here. This is net wrap hay. Again, this hay has been sitting out in the sun, in the rain, in the hail, in the sleet, in the ice. And look, literally that much, that much of it is bad. The rest of it, is good high quality hay for the cows to eat. Inside this hay is we shake it. We shake it, we've got seed, we've got fescue seed, we've got cool season grasses, we've got timothy, clover, all that stuff. So what we do here on the Stony Ridge Farm, and I wanna give you guys this tidbit, this food for thought. 
why on earth are you taking a piece of carbon and storing it inside a $50,000 barn to only save yourself probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $30 per year. How many years would it take to pay for that barn? How many hay barns have gone up from people putting hay in their barn and it's too wet, parking the tractor in there and the tractor and the hay burns up. Never ever store your machinery in the same barn that you store your hay. If you guys are already storing your hay, I hope this little bit of food for thought is helping you, helping you with your decision making process. Take that barn and make it something usable for your farm and store your hay just like we're storing it right over here. This is how we store our hay. It's all lined up in a row the ideal scenario is that each individual hay bale does not touch the other individual hay bale because when they do, they create a V in there and that V is where water likes to stay and stagnate and rot that hay bale. So not only will you have a rotten bottom, you'll have rotten on both sides. So don't let them touch, set them up just like this. We take the bale and roller, we back up, we grab one bale of hay, these are 33 cows, we grab one bale of hay per day and we roll it out. If we had 66 cows, we'd be rolling out two bales. That's how we do it. That's what we do on the Stony Ridge Farm. This video was inspired by a viewer leaving a comment arguing with me about how much hay I wasted by not putting it in a barn. And I'm telling you, I'm not wasting hay and I'm not wasting money. Every piece of that bale gets put to use. When we're out here grazing, the cows graze off one third, they trample one third, and they leave one third. When we roll out a bale of hay, they eat 85 to 95 percent and the rest of it gets trampled back into the land. We target specific areas that need nutrient. You'll see a little bit of broom sedge out here, a little broom straw. We target those areas. What comes out of that cow's butt is pH neutral. We are not throwing money on the land, we're throwing carbon on the land and the cows are doing the work. Thanks so much guys for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. This is how we store our hay. This is what we do to regenerate the land. This is what we do to build soil and bring carbon back to our land. Guys, we're destroying our topsoils with commercial fertilizers. We're destroying it with a quick fix pill. We need to start thinking about saving our environment, saving our soil, getting better earthworms, getting better microbes, and building our soil so we don't have to go spend money at the co-op every year. If I had to fertilize this farm, it'd cost me $25,000 a year. I got $10,000 worth of hay right here, and I haven't fertilized in six years. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And beside me, behind me, run over soft, soft, <laughs> here we go.